Okay. Well, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, let's start off with a roll call. Mr. Here. Mr. Denner. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Here. Counselor, would you like to read the public notice? Yes. Public notice is hereby given that there has been introduced before the town board of the town of Patterson, New York, on March 23rd, 2022, an amendment to Patterson Town Code Chapter 154 entitled Zoning, which amendment will amend Section 154-27 Permitted Accessory Uses, Section 154-74 Minimum Construction Standards, and section 154-112, hotels and motels. Now, therefore, pursuant to section 20 of the Municipal Home, Room Law, Home Rule Law, the Town Board of the Town of Patterson, New York will hold a public hearing on the aforesaid amendment at the Town Offices 1142 Route 311, Patterson, New York, on April 27, 2022, at seven o'clock p.m. in the evening of that day, or as soon thereafter as may be held at which time all persons interested therein shall be heard. The town board will make every effort to assure that the hearing is accessible to persons with disabilities. Anyone requesting, anyone requiring special assistance and or reasonable accommodations should contact the town clerk. I would ask that anybody present here, if they have any comments on this or have any questions, if you would approach the mic. Hearing none. Motion to close. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would ask that anybody, nobody is joining us by Zoom? No, nope, sorry. Is it working? Uh, it's working. This is going to be there tonight. All right, Charlie, you're up. As I was about to say, close the public hearing. Would now be the time for town board members to make comments or? Sure, if you'd like to make a comment. Or ask oh, questions. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, thanks. Um, so I'm interested to know if these changes would enable the large scale warehouse operation to grow cannabis in a warehouse. Is that, um, can you see anything in here that would do that? Is there anything yes. in the law that suggests that that would? Occur? Yes. Where? I, yeah, well, I just want to double check. So when we're striking, yeah, I'm just going here. So in section two, 154.27B, B1, we're striking out no, we're adding any farm structure or building or structure or building for the housing of any permitted farm type, animal or the storage of manure or other odor or dust producing substance shall, and we're striking out be permitted with 100 feet of any property line and we're adding comply with Article 10. Correct. Okay. So does that enable it's on our agenda? No. Your because agenda, if, Valley Hack Farms. If I can explain. Okay. If you go to Article 10, Article 10 has the same requirement. So, so then rather, why are we making the change? So why are we making the change just for no. clarification in the code? In no way, shape, or form changes the application that's re been received by the planning board. So we've received an application already? Yes. All right. We received an application for, um, can you just describe to me what the application is for? Can we wait till we get to it on the agenda? I guess. Then I'm uh, the Sorry, we have somebody calling me. It's only a public comment after marriage. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so we've opened the uh, public hearing on the <laughs> zoning changes. Um, anybody joining us by Zoom, do they have any comments or questions? Okay, all right. So just to clarify for the record, the zoning change is to clarify that section? Yes. Not to not for any future projects no that we that absolutely we not sue can you uh go get me a code book 
Supervisor, I have Article 10. You have Article 10? I have Article 10. I was looking at it earlier today. Okay. I did. I was so looking at it also. Do you so. have that section? All right. So Article 10, Section 154-44 says, C, no storage of manure or other odor or dust producing substances shall be allowed within 100 feet of any road or property line, nor within 100 feet of any stream or body of water. So the reason that we're deleting this one section is because it's redundant mm -hmm. and, and unnecessary. And then, you know, in going through the, uh, the changes with the staff, they felt that, that uh, saying any farm structure instead of no farm structure would add clarification on their part as to the fact that it applies to pretty much all farm structures. So I'm, I'm still um, not clear on them why we're making any changes. Just to clarify the code. All right, so does this change impact the request that is currently <clears throat> proposed put in front of the planning board no it doesn't enable it in any way no so wh what is the status of that project right now you want to bring it up to the front of the agenda or do you want to wait till we get to it on the agenda i don't have any preference does anybody else have any questions i may because no, I've not. got it, I've got it on the agenda to appraise the board about the application we okay. made, so that we could go through it and and talk about, okay. you know, the approach. And the approval on the zoning doesn't is until further down on the agenda after that discussion. So this is just for the public hearing portion. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you have comments on any other section? No, I was just very concerned with that because it's it's clear to me that when we strike out the no originally read we struck out the no we added the any so previous to this change it said no farm structure or building and i understand that this request coming through is being presented as a farm structure is that true it is being presented as a farm okay yes. but it will be a structure yes Okay, so then this is impacting that project. How so, do you and that's, that? Because if we, without the change, it says no farm structure or building or structure or building for the housing of any permitted farm type, animal storage, manure, odor, dust, which um, we have been informed that this, this project, this building will produce odor, dust, noise. It's saying that if we leave it the way it's written, then that project cannot move forward. It's uh, it's obvious with this. That's what this changes for. But I'm just pointing out the obvious. Jamie, do you have a, an opinion on this? Well, it, it's it still says that in the code, though. It says it in section article ten. So, in, it what does it say exactly? It well, I handed up the code. It says original, um, no it, building or structure used for the housing or maintenance. Of, is that the section A? C. Oh, I'm sorry. No storage of manure or other odor or dust producing substance shall be allowed within 100 feet of any road or property line, nor within 100 feet of any stream or body of water. All right. But if you go down further where there's a sentence added that is not part of this section, it says, if you read it, it says, sub or dust producing substance shall comply with article 10. Right. So it's saying then it will comply with article 10. If Correct. we take, if we, so now we're saying any farm structure or building or structure or building for the housing of any permitted farm type animal or the storage of manure or other odor or dust producing substance shall comply with article 10. But you're telling me article 10 is saying the same thing. It's not allowing it. But this section, when we strike that out and add that last sentence, is saying it is complying with it. Oh, the way I read it is saying that it has to comply with Article 10. Well, uh, shall means it is. Shall mean it, mu it, means it must. It must. So shall comply with Article 10. Yeah. Producing substance shall comply with Article 10. Yes. Okay, so, and what does 10 say? 
then I don't see any purpose of changing this. If 10 is the same thing and it's redundant, I don't see any reason to change other than to me, I'm seeing this that it's being changed to enable a project that has been presented to the town that some of us have not been in agreement with. Okay, and I'm telling you, that's not what this does. That's not what it says. It provides clarification. If you are that concerned, we don't have to make the change. Okay. It was just clarifying what's in the code. Okay. Yes, I would even suggest if, if we want to compromise a little bit, maybe waiting, tabling it till after the project's gone through the process, whether it gets approved or not, and then maybe revisiting the, to clean up the code. True, but there are other there are other code, section, there are right? other code changes <clears throat> that um, I would like to see move forward. So I would be more comfortable if, if the board is not comfortable with changing that language. It it doesn't affect anything. So we just but then to, then we still have to vote on it. We don't know whatever I, vote I is. So we could actually we could actually vote it. It what? could actually get voted. You see, do you want to vote on it? Why don't we just remove the set? I think what you're saying is why don't we just remove that one area from the changes? Wait. There's still a lot of other changes that relate to other parts of the code. So what, right. what parts of the code do we need to what, what do we need to expedite? Well, specific, on? specifically, I'm concerned about the issue with the with the hotel because right now the hotels are, are permitted as of right, mm -hmm. but they are also permitted by special use permit. It kind of creates a conflict. And I'm sure the attorney will, you know, weigh in that. You know where there's a conflict within the code it goes to the benefit of the property owner which is the tack we've been taking as far as reviewing that application but i'm hoping not to create any sort of confusion in the future going forward with that project so that section is is this all in the resolution as all changes or is there a resolution on this yes so change? there's a resolution there's a local law that's been prepared which has attached all the changes it's very easy just to say that we're not going to make the changes to just exclude. Yeah, exclude. Well, I think that if we had a work session on this and it was it, it was explained and we went through it in more detail and had the opportunity to ask questions rather than just having it handed to us now, I just think that- It wasn't that handed to you now, it was handed to you a month ago, Mary. A, a month ago? A month ago. No. No. I didn't see this a month ago. You voted on it. On what, the public hearing? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm sorry, I didn't see section two. I'm sorry for that. Did you see section two? I didn't pay attention to it. I, what we have here is what we saw. Okay, you know, well, I'm not saying that. So I, we might've voted on having the public hearing, but I don't recall us sitting down and discussing all of these changes. I don't specifically recall discussing section two. Do you, Charlie? Um, unless you did it at the meeting I missed. Oh, no, we've never, nobody, also has, nobody has ever asked questions on this. When we, we asked questions, we did ask questions specifically. And I remember we had a conversation about yeah. this this section. Okay. Can I ask is, um, so does this go through the planning board first before it comes to us? Yes. Do, do they have a recommendation on this? Yes. So you're back. Yeah, it's a, it's a two-sentence I looked at. Is that something I just got last night or this morning? No. Yeah. Can you tell me what it is? <laughs> they, they agreed with the three sections of, they yeah, basically right. it was two sentences that we reviewed it and we agreed with the... Because I've talked to members of the planning board and I don't think they were comfortable with it. They didn't. Then why did they make the recommendation? I don't think they understood the whole thing. That's Which true. members of the planning board? I, it's not to be disclosed. <laughs> so they make a recommendation I'm just saying that we got from the chairman of the, the planning board the uh, recommendation um you know i i think the, if there's if there's confusion about the code i mean clearly we have to make sure there's not confusion before approving it but i think that the like you said the sections the other sections that are not part of this conversation doesn't make sense to hold them up um why don't we just exclude this section that's causing this confusion and since it's basically you know i understand what what jamie said that it's essentially uh so what are uh so what would we we still include and what would we 
we be uh, admitting? Well, as of right now, um, we would be excluding any changes to section B1 and just including all the rest of it, which is moving around a couple of the sections in B4 and B7, adding, you know, B7, uh, adding the section on private garages, which is, you know, which is giving more flexibility to the siting of a private garage and front yard. So anything in, so section 2B besides sub one, anything else we yeah. need to? Yes. And, and let me also add this, section 154.27D has to do with a residential piece of property. It's applicable only to a residential piece of property. The project you're referring to is in a commercial district. Mm -hmm. It's in a C1 district. Okay. Well, I don't think that we discuss this fully so that we make sure that we understand when these changes and in light of everything and what's going on in the community and their concerns, I think that we should sit down and before making these changes, and discuss them in depth and how they're going to impact what what we're doing, what the projects are in the town, rather than just making changes. And um, I think you know, what you're referring to, Mary, is more of a procedural issue that we, we do zoning amendments all the time, right? So we get a zoning amendment, we get it as a board, we get time to review it. Mm -hmm. We bring it up for discussion and set in a public hearing. What you're saying is with zoning amendments to fully understand it, maybe we need to do a work session to go through every one so that the supervisor can explain the impact of these. Because yes. what really what you need to do, and, and maybe we're all remiss, all except Rich, in looking at the existing code and really cross-referencing, okay, here's what the code says, here's what the intent is up by the change. Mm -hmm. But that that's by us doing our due diligence and probably a work session to go through every one. We I'm, we had a discussion on this. Said that. What's that? It's not the first time I've said that. No, no, to I'm, have I'm a work saying though, like some of that. the stuff we did talk about at the meeting, because like I said, I remember specifically some. talking about the but it some because I had a question about it. So I mm -hmm. brought it up. Mm -hmm. And so it's incumbent upon all of us. And I agree. I didn't well, read which every is why single I'm, section. Which either. is why I'm bringing it up yeah. now. And but, if you feel as though that I should have brought it up before, maybe I missed that and I'm bringing it up now. This no, is the second I'm, opportunity I'm that maybe for me to do that. Procedurally, when we do zoning amendments, we should just by matter of procedure say, let's set a, either a work session on it and just I do agree. it that way. I think also, uh, speaking of procedural, I think I thought in the past when we had public hearings and then we had resolutions, we, I thought we kind of um, felt that it wasn't appropriate to vote on that resolution the night that we have the public hearing. Sometimes that's true when we get a lot of public comment. You know, I'm like we don't have a project comment. or something. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think there would be a lot of public comment because I don't think a lot of public understands what, or would know this argument. So, but still, I mean, I mean, we're having questions about it. So I'm sure public, the public mm -hmm. might have questions on it, not knowing what it is. Well, I would say. I mean, I don't have a problem with this, but in deference to Mary, that if we're going to have a public hearing, <coughs> we continue the public, I mean, a work session, excuse me. We continue the public hearing till our next meeting. Next week, no later than next week, we have a work session and go through this line by line if necessary and um, get anyone's questions answered, and then we move on at our next meeting. Okay, but we don't need to keep the public hearing open. No, and just to say, it doesn't help that on your agenda is the Valley Hat Farms, the same night that we're doing the public hearing and making zoning changes. If that makes sense. It's it on my agenda because there was an application submitted to the planning board. I know, but it happens to be the same night we're making changes. So. But the changes are not related. It's all yep. perception. So. Well, okay. I'm not going to argue perception. Motion to but... close the public here. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
Somebody like to audit the bills. I'll make a motion to approve abstract number seven, dated April 15, 2022, in the amount of $1,027,681.31. So Second. All in favor? All right. All right. We have no budget transfers. Mr. Andriano, you were at that. Okay. First on my agenda is the Putnam Lake Park District seasonal lawn maintenance bid. So the bids are in. Uh, there, we have three bids listed here. Colonial Town Landscaping came in uh, the lowest bid. So I'd like to, uh, we have a resolution here. I'd like to approve and introduce this resolution into the record as read toward Colonial Town uh, Town Landscaping, the seasonal lawn maintenance contract for Putnam Lake Park District in the amount of $10,800. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Next, I have the Jackson Beach docks. So we have some information. Um, so this, uh, the money was grant money or? Yes, this is the uh, yeah hundred thousand dollars from the state. Great, awesome. So we, uh, so we have a motion here. I'd like to uh, approve this, uh, enter this motion to the record as read to award Easy Docks Unlimited to uh, provide the docks for the Putnam Lake for Jackson Beach in the amount of $117,320. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Just a question. So that's, that's including installation and whatnot. And those are the same docks we have um, at Warren. Correct. And, and they've been working. They actually, they've been working out well, right? They, they've held sure. up. They've, it's been a couple of seasons now. And Yep, there's been no damage to the uh, ice from the ice, so it's about going with the same docks. Great, yep. that is all I have. Okay, Charles. Next, we have um, MO1 gives you a call it from Putnam County government, which states that uh, Putnam County government is teaming up with members of the local Polish community to send food, supplies, medicine and monetary donations to help the millions of Ukrainian refugees who have taken shelter in Poland. A Mother's Day weekend collection drive for the much needed supplies will be held Friday, May 6th through Sunday, May 8th at the Paladin Center, 39 Seminary Hill Road in Carmel. The List of items needed ranges from diapers, formula, and other baby needs to sanitary supplies for women and snack items like juice boxes and energy bars for children. Also needed are shampoo, toothpaste, and over-the-counter pain medicines like Tylenol, etc. The county uh, created a website for this event that includes the entire list of supplies needed an Amazon link to donate medical supplies, links on how to help with monetary donations, and a sign up for volunteering your time. See putnamcountycares.com slash Ukraine ad, aid, excuse me. The collection hours at the Paladin Center will be Friday, May 6th, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Saturday, May 7th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And Sunday, May 8th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Again, but this is Putnam County government um, um, coordinating a uh, much needed uh, collection drive for uh, people of the Ukraine. Um, is also articles in this week's um, local newspapers, the Putnam Examiner and the Putnam Times um, on this subject. So again, it's putnamcountycares.com slash Ukraine aid um, if you wish to participate in this fundraiser. Thank you. The nice thing about the Amazon link, 
is that if you purchase something, they ship it directly to the Paladin Center. It'll get it sent. You don't have to bother with drop off. And they have a oh, list of great. a lot of medical supplies on Amazon. It's like two pages, stuff ranging from nine dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars. You know, um, a lot of uh, wound care. Um, you know, that sort of items. Yeah, well, that's good. That's a pretty that's good, pretty good list. Thank you, thank you, Sean. Sure. Um, next, we have the um, subject is military tribute banners, and uh, we've discussed this before. We've had uh, a couple of folks come in, make a presentation uh, for the town of Patterson to put up these banners, like you might have seen in other communities. Um, the banners will be 30 inches by 60 inches. Um, the town has committed to purchase brackets used in place, uh, used in, used to place the banners on utility poles. Uh, and we've got the approvals from any utility. No, not yet. Not yet. We've got DOT's approval. Um, NYSEG has not been as cooperative but the applications are all in pending. Okay, thank you. I'm assuming they would approve them because you can see these banners in other towns on polls. So. Yes. Okay, the cost of the brackets for the um, for military tribute banners is $55 each. Supervisor is recommending that the town purchase at this time 60 brackets for a cost of $3,300. Shipping will be an additional $119. Sure. <clears throat> Total cost for 60 brackets is $3,498. Um, okay. If anybody has an objection, I'm going to make a motion that we do this. I think we committed to do this. We should do this. We just need to hear from um, this committee uh, about the particulars so that we can. Uh, move forward in uh, putting people in for this type of honor. So I will make a motion that the town board approve an expenditure not to exceed $3,500 for the purchase of brackets for the military tribute banners. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, John? Next up, uh, we discussed this at the last meeting, uh, is the town's emergency action plan. There was a request for some uh, additional information related to our incident command structure. So that's been included into the plan. That's simply a, a hierarchy um, a chain of command for any incident that would occur uh, at town hall. So um, any other additions, changes. Now, remember, this is a living, breathing document. This is something that we're looking to approve, but we can always, you know, year to year make change. In fact, it should be updated yearly. So uh, it was gone through through the safety committee, as well as Sue Brown and Vinny, our fire um, fire inspector, making some changes on this plan. So any questions, comments from anyone? We looked at the draft and we saw um all of Vinny's recommendations and they're in there. So I yeah. think that he's pretty much covered. Yeah, and this and the plan is designed change. to be a framework. It doesn't give every detail of every emergency as people know that these incidents are fairly fluid, but gives a framework for a response plan. So I think it's a it's a really good uh, foundation, if you will, for a town hall emergency action plan. Like yeah, an all, all hazards plan, right? It was also actually created years ago and it's just been updated. Yeah. So it's that is what's going to happen over the years. Yeah. I think having Vinny's input into it was a really good yeah. oh, yeah. point too. Okay, so uh, we have a resolution which would um, allow for the adoption and implementation of the emergency action plan for town hall. So I'll move that we uh, ask that the resolution be entered into the record as though read. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The next item we have relates to um, our video conferencing that was used. We've, we've used it, remember, at the beginning of the pandemic. We were, at one point, we were under the emergency uh, directives from our governor, Governor Cuomo at the time. We had done some of our town board meetings strictly by Zoom. And on April 9th, Governor Hochul signed Chapter 56 of the Laws of 2022 relating to the New York State budget. 
for 2022 to 2023 state fiscal year, including in the bill is an amendment to the open meetings law to make permanent, they say make permanent, but then they say until July 1st of 24, the expanded use of video conferencing by public bodies to conduct open meetings under extraordinary circumstances, regardless of a declaration of emergency. So we've been provided with kind of a Q&A, but essentially it comes down to the idea that um, absent an emergency declaration, um, would we want to amend the way we're doing our, our meetings? Now, right now we have video conferencing um, included as part of our Zoom platform, but that's not, this is really focusing on the town board as a body and whether or not we want to change our current you know, methodology of doing business using video conferencing. Um, even if we did, we would still be required to have a quorum on site. It doesn't allow us to just, you know, have everybody off in their, you know, their own locations because there is an expectation that the public has a right to be present, physically present for that. So, you know, we brought it up kind of joking through, during the pandemic that um, it, by the letter of the law, people would be allowed to be present where you're conducting business, right? So that mean, does that mean you have to open up your house to someone who wants to sit for a meeting? Mm -hmm. um, currently, I think the system is working pretty nicely that we have, you know, the ability for people to um, join our town board meetings via Zoom or via the YouTube link. So really for discussion, does anybody want have an opinion on our current format or if we want to do, make any changes based on this? I like our current format. Changes. So are we talking about changing the way we do it or having something in place in an event we had to switch over? So go ahead. This, yeah, this, this law, doesn't affect what we're doing right now, but it would allow us the ability to change if, say, some town board member had, you know, a, a problem with an elderly family member that they had to stay home, but they could still then join us. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, a lot of requirements that go along with that, and I'm not so sure it's worth it. Sean and I had a conversation earlier about uh, you know all the, all the yeah all the things that we're going to have to do but if we ever were going to do this we need to have a policy in place and we need to have a public hearing on it and then implement that policy um and so i wanted to because this is a new law i wanted to throw it out i don't know that anybody needs to you know deal with it tonight um but you need to be aware of it and then if we are going to do this we need to work on getting the policy written and you know having the public hearing so that you know god forbid something happens that a town board member you know broke their leg and they're sitting in traction in the hospital they could they could still participate by zoom what are some of the things that we would have to do that would be well we have to have a policy which talks about how um we would have to post notice on our website we would have to um, ensure that um, there was a transcript of everything. There would be some notice provisions. You, you got it from you? Well, I was keying in on one thing that it said that the, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, except in the case of executive sessions conducted pursuant to the public officer's law, the public body must ensure that members of the public body can be heard, seen, and identified while the meeting is being conducted. Like right now, we, well, I guess, Paul has the ability to see them. We do not. We're, we know they're there because he tells us they're in, but there's certain aspects that might change maybe our, um, you know. This, this sounds like what we were doing during the pandemic. Right. right? Yes. And, and under an emergency declaration, if yeah. that were happening, and I think that would allow for that. That's different. So I think that's what they're doing, that they're, what this whole thing is about, because that was under emergency declaration. We were allowed to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, Maybe if there was a local emergency or something where we could, couldn't meet in person like this, where we'd have to go back to that. Except platform. it still requires, it still requires that three people, a court, you can't right. use the video conferencing to create a quorum. So mm -hmm. you would still need three people physically out of the five, you know, to be present either, let's say here at a, a library, someplace public where the public is still able to come. And then the other up to the other two town board members could be, you know, you could be in Florida, you could be anywhere. Um, but it would be the same thing. I mean, it has to be a public notice. Yeah. A meeting yeah. And then links to yeah. the 
I think the difference in the pandemic was we were all remote. All five of us were in our. But I mean, this could this could cover that as well, though, right? Not that no. part. No, no. You could still physically without the emergency declaration. All this allows is for one member essentially. I mean, it could be two, but essentially, if somebody needed to video conference and. And what I started the conversation with Rich today was I said, you know, one thing I've always been impressed with this town board is we have tremendous participation. We rarely, like, I don't think any of us miss more than like two meetings a year on average, two or three meetings. We've always had great, you know, um, success with that. And, you know, but, but barring an emergency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a matter of whether, so, I mean, if, if everybody wants to take a look at the information and the law and see whether we think it's worth going down the road of creating you know, a resolution and a policy and procedure on this. If um, I could just read this in for yeah. clarification. If a member is unable to be physically present at, at any such meeting location due to extraordinary circumstances, um, as set forth in a resolution and written procedures, including disability, illness, caregiving responsibilities, or any other significant or unexpected factors. So we'd have to kind of clarify that. Example, not just on vacation, and you know, not just I don't feel like going tonight, right. but I'll yeah. log in. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I don't feel like getting out of my pajamas yeah. or something like that. You know. Well, that was great during the pandemic, right? Yeah, don't just put a shirt on. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we do you want to set a public hearing on that, or do you just want to? Well, we have no, a right technology, technology. Oh, yeah, that's you want okay. to do that. Yeah, the, the question here is. You know, is this something you want to pursue where we're going to have to sit down and write the policies and procedures? Or, you know, are we just going to rely on everybody showing up? I think it would be good for going back to really to Mary's point about the, um, the, the previous discussion. Why don't we let everybody really take a look at some of the information on this mm -hmm. instead of making a decision tonight on how we want to move forward? And next meeting, we can always just sure. either bring it up if need be, you know, by well, I'll throw it back up the agenda, you know, okay. just to say either, you know, yay or nay in terms of moving forward, but to have all the, the information. Thank you. Okay, uh, first on my agenda is the Putnam Lake Fire Department Articles of Corporation. I apologize, anybody that went out as bylaws originally. Patterson. Yeah, Patterson. Yes, I'm sorry, Patterson. Uh, certificate of Amendment for the Patterson Fire Department, <coughs> number one, Articles of Corporation. Right before I left, I want to marry. Yeah, um, Is this something we have to do each year? No, no, no. no. The last time, and I, I think I included it, uh, the last time this was done was 1933. Hmm. Thank you. So you don't remember? No, I wasn't here at that point. I think Sean was. I feel like it sometimes. I told me it was 1933. No, but I mean, I think. Something along those lines. Maybe it was just a discussion talking to the fire department about getting it or something. But anyhow. Okay. So anybody have any questions about what they're proposing to change? Well, to be honest with you, I haven't gone through it in that detail. There's, there's one section I you know I question Jamie on. I don't know if you want to jump in here, uh, section 13, where it says in case the fire department dissolves, then they have to give all of their assets to a like organization. Yeah, and New York not for profit law requires that. Uh, they specify in it um, preference given to voluntary fire department, another voluntary fire department. You know what, if we're going to have a work session on um, the zoning amendments, let's include this so we can get a chance to read this. And that's my suggestion. If everybody else is real, real comfortable, fine.
I didn't have a chance to read it in detail. I thought we'd talk about it tonight, but we certainly can talk about it. In, uh... You guys. Jamie, any words of wisdom on this? It seems like it's... Is it straightforward enough? Yeah, I, I think uh, what they're trying to do is um, the, as Rich said, the certificate of incorporation is from 1933. A lot has changed since then. So I think they're just really trying to bring it up to up to date and make sure they're in compliance with everything, uh, with all the new not-for-profit laws. There's things that aren't in their, um, their certificate of incorporation where, but that just don't account for anything. And, and they really should have probably updated that a long time ago. I'm good. I'm good. Charles? I'll be good. Okay. I'd like to move this resolution and ask that it be entered into the record as though read, approving the certificate of amendments of the Patterson Fire Department's certificate of incorporation. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so next on my agenda um, is to update the board, the planning board. Um, last week received the application. I advised the board that there was an individual who bought a piece of property along the 22 on the south end of town, and he was looking to put a uh, cannabis growing and light manufacturing facility on the property. Um, in my opinion, when we had this discussion, and this discussion actually goes back to, I think, April of last year when I apprised the board of, you know, the cannabis law and the potential changes. Charlie asked me to dig that memo out. I gave it back to the board about um, the inherent pitfalls that the town is looking at with regards to the implementation of uh, cannabis growing, um, selling, consumption, light manufacturing um, and uh, some of the uh, issues we were going to have potentially with the cannabis control board. Um, you know, I know the board's uh, position on this. I think the board is well aware of my position on this. So, um, but I wanted to make you aware and um, elicit any feedback. I also, you know, gave it to the town attorney, you know, to render an opinion uh, based on the law that was adopted, you know, what our, you know, legal ramifications are and uh, what we can do. Um, I've been on behalf of the planning board and my other hat um, going through the application. Um, as Mary pointed out earlier, they submitted this as a farm. That's something I didn't see coming. Uh, I don't know that I would consider this a farm. I don't know that my opinion would hold water. But, you know, for me, farming is an individual, you know, using the soil and trying to grow crops and livestock, not, you know, a factory where they're, you know, manufacturing marijuana. Um, I just don't see this as a farm at all. But Again, I don't know that my opinion would hold up. Um, I'll let Jamie you know, weigh in on that. Um, there are a number of issues with the application. It's going to be a fairly complicated application for the board and potentially uh, for the zoning board because my opinion is if it goes forward, if they proceed forward, it's going to have to go to the CBA as well as the um, planning board. And then there is another issue with what they're proposing to do, just so you're all aware. They're looking to put a driveway coming from the property out across the town road and out onto 22. Well, that's going to bring in the town board, whether you're going to you know, approve something like, like that. But the issue that we have is you know, whether we've been um, taken out of the game by the state legislation. At that point, I'll let Jamie weigh in. 
Yes, we're we're still not entirely clear what the state is going to do with the cannabis resolution uh, statute because there's these regulations that they keep talking about putting forward, which you know they have uh, they've moved forward with some of them, but uh, really this the local municipalities don't have a very clear understanding because they haven't ever completed those regulations. Um, so it does appear from the way that the statute is written that they do intend to preempt a lot of what the local municipalities can do when it comes to um, uh, to regulating uh, these uses. But like I said there, we don't have a clear, fully clear understanding of it because they haven't put forward the regulations. As far as farm use, I can understand that concern completely. Um, I have seen a lot of guidance material that seems to imply that that may be where they're going with the growth element of it, calling it agricultural use. They have not changed, they haven't amended the ag and markets law yet to add this as a crop, but hemp is in there as a crop. So it does seem like that may be the avenue that is taken. Um, and if that is the case, and this property isn't in an ag district, but if it was a property in an ag district, we'd have even more issue. Uh, and going forward, we could have more issue if properties within ag districts do start trying to uh, put forward these kind of uses. But we, you know, we're still reviewing everything that comes out as it comes out, and we're all in a very difficult position because we have a state that changed the law and it hasn't told us how they're going to really issue that. Because is that know. state commission fully operational? There is a board, a board? As, as of February, I believe. And they have so far issued 50 licenses to grow. This facility is not one of them. Yes, yeah. uh, I think most of the licenses have been issued to places that had medical marijuana licenses and now have been issued licenses for growth for recreational purposes. Is the hemp crop very specific to which plant like a non THC? Yes, exactly. Plant. Still some of the same issues though, odor, things of that nature. If you've mm -hmm. ever been uh, in Poughkeepsie on Knoxon road, yep. you've probably, you smell it from a couple miles away. Mm -hmm. Security uh, issues with security because folks don't realize, I guess mm -hmm. that it's hemp and uh, there's, there's signage. The signage specifies industrial hemp to, I guess, it, discourage people from trying to come onto the property and take it. They wonder why they're not getting high after they smoke it. <laughs> there's a lot of cameras. Um, there's a lot of light. It, you know, you see a, essentially a farm, but with, it almost looks like an airport security surrounding it. Yeah, the fencing. So stuff. if the, the project that's being proposed, the area is not zoned for the project, then what are the implications on us? We can't push put something through that's not zoned for but it is a project. It's a C1 commercial zoning district that allows both farming and light manufacturing. That allows farming. It allows farming. But it's not we farming. allow we allow farming anywhere in the town of Patterson. And but no they're so they're putting it under the umbrella as farming. Previously they were not. And now because they realize that it's not zoned for the project the way it was originally proposed, well, they're now putting it under the umbrella as farming. So they never made an application for this project under any other zoning. They had a conversation with me about whether I thought it was permitted. And I had a conversation with this board that in my opinion, um, this type of operation is not farming. It is something new. And I talked to the board about potentially changing the zoning to address that. The board was not interested. My opinion, and it hasn't changed, this is this kind of falls into neither fish nor fowl. You know, um, for me, you know, farmer raising dairy cattle or, you know, doing a, a tomato field or a wheat field, hey, you know, is farming. It has to do with the land. It has to do with the outside. Um, this to me is, is you know, I, I've been learning a little bit more about this as we go along. And there's a term out there called uh, factory farming where they're doing, you know, more and more uh, 
crop raising, you know, not only cannabis, but tomatoes and other vegetables. Control um, environment. And you know what your outcome yeah, is. Um, yeah. Aquaculture, um, hydroponics, mm. all within a building. This is something that, you know, we've never contemplated in our zoning code. Um, so our zoning code doesn't specify what farming is as it, far as it does specify what farming is but not doesn't it wouldn't say you can't grow something inside the factory or it has it has to be in a field or it's not that specific right, right. would, would it allow for it, uh, again you know growing up in a farming <coughs> community i wouldn't have even envisioned something like mm -hmm. this well the whole zoning book is because of things that come along that we never would have most of the time yes you know it's more so reactive than without um i don't want to take up too much time and i don't want to irritate too many people but when i was going through some of the codes i was looking at article 11 right to farm and very quickly um because i emailed myself the page the town board of the town of Harrison finds that farming provides a number of benefits to the community including maintaining open space and the rural character of the community providing a source of fresh farm products, providing an important source of food and habitat to wildlife within a community and creating a healthy diversity of businesses within the local economy. Further, it is recognized that there are many practices and activities which are necessary for the business of farming, which practices and activities may at times conflict with adjacent land uses. The specific purpose of this chapter to provide that legitimate farming practices and activities may proceed and be undertaken free of unreasonable and unwarranted interference or restrictions. It is also the intent of this chapter to aid in the pre preservation and promote as an important economic activity farming within the town to protect the existence and operation of established farms and to encourage the creation of new farming business. So that was just um, one of the articles and on the right to farm, but I don't see that uh, this being a benefit to the community, their project, if they're trying to fit it under the farming. And I think that we have good cause to deny it. All right. Would um, you agree? Well, I, that, that specific provision in the code, um, just a little background on that. Mm -hmm. So the there are certain um, agriculture and markets law uh, preempts the state from re unreasonable regulation of farm preempts the town pre preempts the town from regulating uh, unreasonably regulating uh, agricultural production in, in ag districts and likely that provision comes a lot from the the municipal local municipality trying to make sure that there were no issues with preemption on when they were trying to regulate pro farming within the town so that's just a just way a little background of why that is likely there I mean this application is not in front of the town board I don't know that the town board has any authority to do anything on it right now uh, if the town wanted to look at its zoning code, they certainly can. Mm -hmm. But right now, that's in front of the planning board. And is this a full application, or are they in the conceptual they, stage? They came in as a concept review. But the application for a concept review, and I have it here, if anybody wants to take a look at it, or look at it after the meeting, um, is very thorough, very complete, very professional. Uh, I do know the engineer on this. You know, Jay Fischetti and associates are fairly they're good at you know as they come with engineering. Um, Barry, I just want to say that section that you just read, you have to remember that was all written years ago. I'm just pointing out that it's there and, and I don't Brother. see that it I think that we sat here in this room and we all agreed to opt out of dispensary and lounges, and now we have a whole factory facing us. Correct. So and, and we I did. think that I feel the same way I did. I feel the same way now as I did back in, I think it was September or October, whatever that month yeah. was, about the dispensaries and lounges. To me, this is multiplied. And I feel the same way that I don't think it's appropriate that people are consuming or selling marijuana within our community. I think there's enough another number of inherent problems and I would like at least the time to see how it works out in other communities before I change my mind ever on that. Um, you know, that being said, 
and not to mention the homes that are, you know, the people that are coming out of their road every day. Well, yeah, but this is not coming out on that residential road except for potentially an emergency corner. access. And I can show you that later if you want to see it. Sure. Um, um, the only thing I would like to ask is that if we have a work session on the changes that maybe we should include the the uh, the planning and the zoning board on them and we can discuss them in this way there, you know, we can get out all of the questions that we have and maybe I think Pete, I don't know who you spoke to, but maybe they can they can be there and we can Okay, uh, so are we talking about the zoning changes now? Are we talking yeah, about no, I'm this going back to I'm going back to this because my concern from the beginning of the meeting was that I want to make sure that we're not making any changes to enable this project to move forward. That's that's where I stand. I, I so, appreciate and then that. I know that I we talked it, about having a work session on that. So the, the last comment I'm going to make about this is just that when we sit down for a work session, I'd like to include everyone. That's all. That's all I'm asking. I think it's fair. You're talking about all boards or? Yes. Well, you spoke to someone on the planning board that you said, um, didn't understand what was being moved forward. So maybe then if we sit down with them and they understand, we understand, and we know what we we're going to move forward. Essentially, if they don't feel comfortable, they should be there. And if not, they right. should right. You know, not complain, right? Well, I don't think it was a complaint. Well, I don't mean, I don't mean it that way, but. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. you know, that's all. Anyone else? I'm good. Is it, am I up? Yes. You're up. Okay. But just so, so I'm sorry, just to clarify, um, so we, there's nothing really we can do anyway yet now, right? It hasn't that the process hasn't got to the point where we have any say or any power to do anything. So no. Okay. So um with that being said, I have only one rec request um from Mr. Machabaro. He's requesting us to hire. Uh, Clay Harrison and Kayvon Linton at the rate of $11 per hour for junior staff rec assistance. I'd like to make a motion to approve Clay Harrison and Kayvon Linton at the rate of $11 per hour for the busy summer camp season. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, also, Mr. Chavarro was asking us to hire Jonathan Timmel for the position of lifeguard for the town of Patterson. Uh, he's come highly recommended from Shannon Farrell at the rate of $13 per hour. I'll make a motion to approve Jonathan Timmel for lifeguard at the rate of $13 per hour. So moved. Second. Okay. Well, paperwork and certifications will be submitted to Sue prior to the start of their employment. And then the second item on my agenda has been tabled local law number one zoning changes. It's tabled. Thank you. Any board member have any other business? Uh, I do. Uh, just going back to the the um, emergency action plan. So I think it's a great plan. Um, but are we going to do any training with the employees so they get to know what's in the plan? And so we do um, for some of the emergency actions we were talking about, like with the drills and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Sort of nice, yeah. yeah. Be good though to um remember how we've always talked about doing like something like active shooter and those are a little tougher to do, you know, like a training or something, awareness. Oh, like uh, we've done that in the past. Oh. My my thing is, you know, we have a, a plan, a rejection plan. Um, instead of just giving it to the employee, sign off on it that you read it. Um, I think it's important to train everybody and there's stuff in there on active shooter and how to respond to different types of emergencies. I just think it's important to train the employees, employees on it. Yeah. It's not something we just like said, put on a shelf and it's in a binder and then, right. you know. It could be a great plan, but if nobody knows about it or knows, knows how to use it, yeah, um, it's useless. Sue, can you further that discussion with Vinny though to uh, see if there's specific sections that make sense to either piecemeal or do them as part of, you know. I'll pull the fire alarm. Yeah. Oh, there's nobody, nobody. here. No, we're down in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I also, uh, my second thing is I have a, um, 
I have an associate that works for the Department of Justice, and he uh, I met with him, and he is um, he, he's in a special unit now that does audits and like security surveys of not only buildings and facilities, but also computer um, computer systems for businesses and municipalities. Right now, their biggest concern is being hacked since the, what's going on over in Europe and in the Middle East and stuff. So he has offered his services, his team to uh, come in and assess our computer systems and our facilities for security or vulnerability employees. So I don't know if it's something that the town at, board would like. At no charge? At no charge. It's the federal government tax money. Well, there is a. Yeah, so not, the town, <laughs> not there's no charge to the town for the services. It's, it's what they do. All right. So why don't you have them give me a call and put them in touch with uh, our IT people? Mm -hmm. They can coordinate that. Also, uh, facilities too. They, like they used, one of the first things you talked about was the water treatment plant. You know, and I wouldn't have thought of that. You know, but we send out advisories. You probably get them yep. on the uh, vulnerabilities we mm -hmm. get from the state down to the specifically, like you said, the water treatment plants are yeah. a big, big issue with them getting hacked. You know, so that they could do, they can come and do physical assessments and stuff too, as well. So that's great. Good. Sure. Why not? Thanks. Anybody else? I think we've got a couple of announcements. You want to do the food drive? Me? Yes, yeah, sure. All right. We are doing another community food drive. We did one with the United Way uh, during the pandemic that was very successful. We, we raised a lot of uh, food for the, um, the Pat uh, Patterson Community Church. And so we're doing another one. They are getting low. So uh, the Patterson Community Church reached out to me a month or so ago and said that they are starting to get low. They do get some funding, some grant funding, which is drying up, and they are starting to uh, get low on, on food. So we are doing a food drive right outside here, Saturday, May 7th, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. out here in the parking lot of Town Hall. And there's a bunch of items. Will this be listed on the uh, website? I don't know if it's up there yet. I know it's up on Facebook. Yeah, we'll, we'll post it again on uh, Facebook as we get closer. And it, it lists, I think the Patterson Community Church page has it as well as the Patterson, Patterson Community Church uh, Facebook page as well as the Patterson Community Facebook page has it and it shows all the different items. It's, it's too much to read, but Basically, it's a lot of canned goods and you know, non-perishable foods. It's pretty much it. A lot of pastas and cans and stuff like that. Just please make sure that the your items are not expired. That's something we ran into on the last food drive. It's great that people clean out their cupboards and their, their pantries, but they don't look at the expiration date. And they we had to unfortunately throw out a lot of the expired food, which we you know they cannot they can't give away. So. You know, go to Acme when they're doing our shop right. Those that can can sale once in a while or whatever, um, and and uh, head on down from 11, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. You can just stop by. It'll be real quick. We'll help you unload your car. We'll get you in and out. Reminds me of my father-in-law was just to say that um, charity starts at home. We're talking about raising and getting supplies for Ukraine. That's also critically important, but this is something that's right in our own community as well. And it's the similar kinds of items that they're looking for. Yeah. Uh, so like I said, non-perishable uh, donations. And, and that's a good point. It, it, it goes to local people, yeah. local families you know, that, that um, you know, get their food from the Patterson Community Church food pantry. That they, you know, they depend on getting with getting, the rate of inflation right now. I'm sure this is more important than ever. They're probably really being hit, hit hard. So, yeah, let's see that one. That's the same time they're doing the uh Paladin Center that you mentioned is, is in, also in that time with the uh drop off location. Um, next up, we have an announcement that the Putnam Service Dogs um, organization is doing an event called. Fun Minster, Jamie, this is for you and your dog. <laughs> Fun Minster Dog Show, Saturday, May 14th, from 12 to 3 at the Patterson Rec Center. The, ca the categories for the dog show are wiggle butt, 
shaggiest coat, dog owner lookalike, <laughs> best senior, best dressed, best tail, best ears, most talented, largest dog, and smallest dog. And uh, admission is adults $15, kids $5, 12 and under, and $20 for the dog with the handler. So uh, the information is on uh, at the Patterson Rec Center and on the town website. So Putnam Service Dogs, uh, great event, Saturday, May 14th. Jamie will be there. Yeah, if they had stinkiest, I might, I might win one we of those We can cats. probably have them add that. <laughs> yeah. You want to throw it up? Uh, sure. Next up, be part of something big, give blood. Town of Patterson Recreation and Parks Blood Drive, 65 Front Street, Patterson, New York. Uh, use the parking lot and the sliding glass doors on the left side of the building to access the community room. This will be held Thursday, June 2nd, uh, from 11.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Got it. The Patterson Recreation Center is a busy place. <laughs> there will be an indoor tag sale Saturday, May 21st, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You must supply your own chairs and tables. There's a $30 charge per space, a 10 by 10 space. It's limit to 57 vendors. Reserve now. The Patterson Recreation Center. Front Street, 845-878-7200. Um, pretty interesting uh, graphic. Okay. All right, one more thing. Uh, just to let everybody know, um, I'm sure you're all aware of the hotel has been proposed on Route 311. They have scheduled a balloon test for May 7th at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the planning board and zoning board are doing a joint site walk out there at the time, and the town board has been invited. If you would like to be there. What, was the what is the date? It is May 7th at 8 o'clock. We have not scheduled a rain date as we have yeah. some difficulty doing that. 8 a.m. balloon test, 10 a.m. Yeah. town hall. A busy day. <laughs> Miss the old days, though, when we used to get together at breakfast at 7 a.m. That's 7 good. Yeah. All right. Uh, second thing is we have received an invitation from the uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars. Mm -hmm. Uh, they are having a 100 year celebration, May 15th. 75th year. 75th? I'm sorry, 75th year. Thank you. Um, at 2 p.m. 2 p.m. That's on 15th. And there is a time capsule that's going to be buried, and we've been asked to put something in it. Uh, whatever we're putting in has to be in an eight and a half by 11 envelope. Do you think of anything that would be appropriate? Well, I'm just going to do a little bit about what's going on in town right now. Hmm. So when they opened up 75 so years going on. Yeah, so this is what it was like. Yeah. Post pandemic. Uh, they include a mask. Yep. Yeah, right. And a COVID a little, test. Yeah. 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 There you go. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See what it looks like. When and the MVETS is having their uh, monthly breakfast this Sunday, if anybody wants to attend. Nine o'clock, nine eleven. When did you say the other invite was? Which one? The veterans. Um, May 15th, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. Okay, we'll open it up to uh, public recognition. Any member that's here wish to be recognized? Hearing none, I'll open it up to those joining us by Zoom. Uh, if any member of our audience. Really? Yeah. We are just so excited. Motion. Mm -hmm. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? 